Do you remember when Seth was describing his helicopter? His helicopter could remain stationary. He used part of its thrust to stay afloat to push it forward. I see that? Yeah. I don't know. Helicopter. Helicopter, yes. You understand that idea? So what's happening here is that I have a positive point and I'm always floating up. Okay. Right? And notice my motors are at a slight angle. Yes. Right? So what happens is, is when I apply my thrust, I will move forward because the motors are positioned to where the motors in the sign direction are counteracting my forward positive points versus the cosine angle here is going purely for thrust. Okay. Now, some of the problems that I'm going to have are is that um, I want to enhance my ability to move forward because as I move forward, my summary is going to want to tip. So what I've done is I have a focal point, sort of like a movement. So the interesting thing about this oh. is as it moves, I constantly uh, have a lift. Okay. So if I want to go straight down, okay. because I'm going to enhance it to where my motors, when I'm moving them, will actually cause the torque down. Because you notice that the motors are here, my center of balance is here. Yes. And I can ensure my center of balance is here because I can move my washers here. And if I have too much positive buoyancy, I have washers that I can add to the bottom. Okay? okay. Uh, now the cool thing about this is not only can I add weight, I can add as much weight as I want to, and I can pivot the angle and change that. Also with the back, I have weight, so I can change the weight in the back, but I can also move the weights in and out to change my side momentum. So I can make it harder to turn this way, or if I want to, I can extend this even further. Where's the other alternate? Worst case scenario, I didn't do the math in some rate. Because worst case scenario, I hope it comes up to that. I am highly, highly scalable in what I can do. I get it. Alright, so if I want to add a lot more positive buoyancy, I have another little adapter. And quite honestly, the, it would be really hard to do the math for that. It would be. Mm. But basically, you know, when you look at the back, well, this is more of like a bench press because I can add washers as I please and I have different washers of different sizes. Good luck with that. Like All right, one more thing. That's what it looks like. Now, eventually, this is going to be like the wrist, uh, right? Yeah. But you notice when I'm moving forward, I'm going to have water resistance yeah, here and water resistance like, here. Okay. That's, that's fine. Now, if I give my motor full force, it's going to go straight down and move down. Okay. But when I'm moving forward and I'm oscillating it, the friction, the water resistance here will be greater, and it will move it here, which will move my submarine like this. Which now, my motors are at complete total right angle to the rising. Yes. And what's the optimum speed for that? Three people. Like what speed oh, this will not outperform any of yours. All of yours should yeah, well, outperform this, both in handling and speed. Um, but the idea about this is that it's two motors. With only two motors. But the thing is, this thing is. power. This thing is. Exactly. Okay. I don't know. What do you want to call it? Tom Thumb. What? Oh, that's right. You know what you could have done to make it easier? Put one motor vertical, one horizontal, have a lot of drag. On one side, just have one motor go forward and backward whenever you want to turn and just the drag pivots around right. Yeah, but that's a constant yeah. spinning top. Yeah, so. This is more, a little more reliable than that. Luckily, you have a few buttons in there, sort of like something. Yeah. All right. Okay, I need to see.